This is gonna be a negative review on the Jumper T Pro. Now, I don't like making negative reviews because it's my hope that manufacturers are gonna be making products that aren't fundamentally flawed. But it's also important that when they do go ahead and release products that do have the amount of flaws and issues like the Jumper T Pro, that it is our job as reviewers and as a voice of the FPV community to call them out. Most of the stuff you see on the channel is actually paid for out of my own pocket. So I tend to approach these things from the view that I'm a consumer and I'm sharing my view as a consumer that someone has paid their hard earned money for something. Now with that said, let's talk about the Jumper T Pro and we're gonna start with what they got right. Jokes aside, they did get a few things right. The first thing that they got right was going with the 2S power plant with 18650 batteries. The other thing that they've done really well is the layout of the radio. Now, there are a number of flaws about the functionality of the different components, but in terms of how they're all laid out and presented to you, they've actually done really well. You have the scroll wheel, which serves two different functions. It allows you to scroll through the different menu items, but also pressing it gives you that enter key. Then on the left-hand side, you've got your menu button, a page button as well as a return button. Now the thing I really don't like is they're missing a model button. So if you want to get into the system menu or into the model menu you've got the one button to do it. It's a nice touch to also include that lanyard mount and the screen is your typical size which you'd see on your jumper T light as well as a Tango 2. And now for the gimbals. Now, while they're hall sensor gimbals and they're in a really good spot ergonomically, the fact that they sit really high up in the radio does make it a little awkward. And the sticks feel really tall, and even when they're adjusted at the lower setting, they're a lot taller than normal. And I found I needed to go into beta flight and lower my rates to normalize for the additional stick travel. They also feel quite weird and quite loose, and there wasn't any obvious way to tighten them without pulling apart the radio. There are also these six buttons up the top which each are assigned to their own channel. And I think these can be used in a number of different and creative ways, such as assigning different flight modes such as angle or horizon mode to one of the particular switches. But the fact that they're all assigned to their own channel does make it a pain in the butt and you've got to actually go into OpenTX or EdgeTX in order to create some workarounds to make them work how you want. We then head up to the antenna, which is visually a good design. However, it's very clear that it was perhaps borrowed from the DJI FPV controller, which was borrowed from the Tango 2. But one thing that they didn't do, which I love about the Tango 2, is the fact that you can rotate the antenna and use it as a stand. You've got the ability to connect in USB-C. Now, if you have a USB-C cable that isn't built to the USB spec, it isn't actually going to fit. However, if you have a USB-C certified cable, then it is going to work. And we now get to perhaps what I would consider to be the biggest flaw of the Jumper T Pro. And the reason why it's the biggest flaw is whether you buy the Internal Express LRS version, the JP4-in-1 or the CC2500, you get these same momentary switches in the trigger position. What do we use for arming and disarming? Well, that's what these trigger switches are designed for. Now, the biggest flaw is they don't actually latch. On my TBS Mambo, on a Tango 2, you've got these buttons and they latch. So you know when the switch is armed or disarmed. You have to go into EdgeTX or OpenTX and use the logical switches function to create a sticky button in order to make sure that you can use these switches for arming. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, it's not that much of an issue to go in and create something in the logical switches function. Whether it's easy to fix it in software, it doesn't change the fact that the manufacturer completely butchered the implementation. When you're buying a product, you're expecting, especially for FPV and remote control aircraft, one of the key fundamental switches that there needs to be on every single radio is a switch for arming and disarming. That is a simple two position switch. It is clearly on or it is clearly off and it holds that position. The fact that Jumper completely ignored that notion, which is a fundamental requirement of our hobby, really shows how flawed this is. But the fact that as consumers, we are the ones who have to go into the software and use a software hack or a software workaround in order to be able to arm or disarm our quads. So I do think this radio is fundamentally flawed because of the way Jumper have gone about it. You might be thinking, well, these are just small issues. The YouTube videos tell us how to work around them. So what's the big deal? 
Well, there's a massive big deal because the manufacturer has taken a consumer's hard earned money and released a flawed product. It shouldn't be up to the community to fix these issues on behalf of a manufacturer. If I'm going to sell you a product, the basic expectation that you should have from me as the manufacturer is that it works to the expectations of the consumer that I'm targeting. If I'm putting out a radio controller for RC aircraft, key fundamental, arming and disarming switch. But you know, this is just going to be another video where I'm ragging on about particular products and those manufacturers aren't going to be working with me. But you know what? I'm more than happy to do it because these are things that need to be said. And if someone doesn't say it, manufacturers are just gonna get away with making bad products. And we the consumers are gonna to have to buy them because we're not gonna have much choice.